Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. This video is another addition to the Comsol for Beginners series. We are recreating this series in 2023 with more information. I hope the previous videos were helpful. I'll be putting the link of the entire playlist in the description section so that you can have a cross check. Today's topic of discussion is grid independent study. I have got a lot of requests to make a video on grid independent study. Although this is not much related to COMSOL, this is, this is basically common for any CFD simulations, but I thought of making a video in the beginner series because it may be helpful for the beginners. So for the purpose of this discussion, I have taken a simple laminar flow example, which I generally take to make you understand about certain things. So today we are understanding grid independent with the help of this laminar flow. So briefly I'll talk about this laminar flow. I have taken a laminar flow where I'm solving the momentum equation or the fluid flow equation. And for that we have taken an arrangement where there is an inlet at the left hand side and an outlet on the right hand side. At the inlet we put a pressure boundary condition static pressure of 10 Pascal and on the other hand the outlet is kept at atmospheric pressure. The fluid properties are equated with the properties of water that means the material is water here. Now what I have done is I have taken a free quad mesh you can see this is a free quad mesh and uh, what I have done is in the size I have taken a custom size even you can see I have put a variable a in the custom size if I change this variable the mesh intensity will change so a is a modulator by which I can change the mesh intensity now you can see the meshes are like this this is very fine mesh we have multiple meshes but we can actually change this number of meshes or mesh density by changing this A parameter. This A parameter is defined here. It is now 0.001 meter or 1 millimeter. Now in the parametric sweep section, I have taken multiple A values. I have taken 5, 2.5, 1, 0.75, 0.25 and I have run the simulation. I can take even smaller say 0 0.1 and 0 0.01. Then I will run the simulation. It will take some time. So after I put on the simulation, I can discuss about the logic. So the logic is for every mesh element you take, the solution should be unique or at least the difference between two solutions should be acceptable because if you if you don't check your grid independence study then there might be a situation you are solving the equation and your equation and your solver may also converge the solution but what may happen you are getting erron erroneous values due to grid no, due to non-checking grid independence. That means number of points you are creating in the solution space may not resolve the gradients appropriately and you know in differential equations you need to calculate multiple gradients. So if you can't calculate those gradients appropriately then you are incurring errors in your simulations and in every step those errors are getting added and ultimately you are getting a value which is not exactly the original value you should get and that is why what you should do you should be working with say three different mesh densities which are very close to each other and then you should check whether you are getting similar result or you will never get exactly similar similar result but you should check whether the results are in the acceptable range now acceptable range means in the engineering domain in most of the problems if you are getting an error less than 0.1% or 0.2% that means difference between two solution is less than 0.1% then you can 
say this is an acceptable solution. So to understand this fact, I have taken multiple A values, that means multiple mesh densities and let's see what happens. The simulations are running. Uh, you can see if you go to the progress bar, you can actually track which A value is well, I mean uh, which A value is working now. So now the A value is it has just changed it is going to the next A value. So from the progress bar you can actually check the A value. So now it is 1 E minus 4. So basically it is solving for point 1 because 1 E minus 4 this is in meter it is it, it will have to solve variables as well so let me pause the video once the simulation is over i will come back yeah we have simulated it and we could simulate up to 0.25 because if you are going beyond that then what's happening then it's taking too much time because the mesh density is too high so sometimes you can't go beyond a certain mesh density because it may increase your simulation time so you have to make an optimization between the simulation time and number of mesh density number of meshes per solution space so now let me check a certain thing so i have taken a cut line here if you can see at the middle i have taken a vertical cut line let us check the average velocity along that cut line so once we change the number of meshes the average velocity should remain constant because uh, I mean your solution should not be dependent on the number of meshes that is what the grid independent study so now let us check the average value so I go to derived values right click on it and I can go to average I can take line average and in the line average I take this cut line to the one option I take the last time step and I'm taking all the a values and the expression so should be the u or x directional velocity so if i go to the velocity and pressure i can go to velocity field this is u yeah x component velocity and then i can click on evaluate so you can see the average values are evaluated now if i just plot so these are the Num uh, mesh sizes you can see 5 mm 2.5 mm 1 mm so i just plot it so you can see initially there was a change uh, an abrupt change of average velocity but after this 3 mm mesh or i can say 4 mm mesh 4 to 4.5 there is very less difference and you can see 4.5 to so this is the number of attempts actually so uh, the values are this so I'll show you if we can yeah so we can you can actually take those values I'll try to plot in it in Excel copy table and clipboard let me try to plot in Excel so that we can better track it so i open an excel file i paste the values here and so you can see the time is constant not required so i delete this particular column enter column so this is the interest so if i just plot it here we can make a reverse of it yeah so we made reverse of it So we also make
no we have to do this one yeah now if i plot okay idea is uh, here you can see the values are not that much different but initially at 5 when the mesh size is 5 then the value and the when the mesh size is 2.5 these two are hugely different that means you are in a error those they they are basically giving you erroneous result but when i go to 0.25 to 1 again there is a huge jump but after one you can see the jump is very i mean the change is very less and there is very little change between these two that means 0.5 and 0.25 now if i can go beyond it like if i go to 0.1 0 0.05 then we'll get minimum error so we should check this particular thing that your solution should not abruptly change if you change the mesh density and sh you should be working on in that particular range of mesh density and that is what i wanted to convey in this particular video i hope this video was helpful if so kindly share our videos so that we get more motivation to upload videos